The contemporary reading is by Art Gish. We are not called to be effective, but to be faithful. The sacred reading is from the book of St. Matthew. Then the Pharisees went off and began to plot how they might trap Jesus by his speech. They sent their disciples to Jesus, accompanied by sympathizers of Herod, who said, Teacher, we know you're honest and teach God's way sincerely. You court no one's favor and don't act out of respect for important people. Give us your opinion then, in this case, is it lawful to pay tax to the Roman emperor or not? Jesus recognized their bad faith and said to them, Why are you trying to trick me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin which is used to pay the tax. When they handed Jesus a small Roman coin, Jesus asked them, Whose head is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. And Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were astonished and went away. Thus ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Have you ever heard a sermon about tarot cards before? Okay. <laughs> Such a pagan. Jesus has some radical and rebellious ideas about money. He rambunctiously overturns the money lenders' tables at the temple to condemn their exploitation of the poor in the name of religion. He leaves a rich man quaking in his boots by proclaiming that a camel could sooner pass through the eye of a needle than a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. So the Pharisees figured they can catch Jesus in a tricky trap when they ask about paying taxes to the empire, saying no, and Jesus is admitting to treason in public, say yes, and the growing Jewish movement to, in opposition to Rome might attack him as a traitor. The Pharisees must have liked their odds, but Jesus is even trickier. Just like he does in parable after parable, Jesus uses a riddle to force his listeners into a new way of thinking. Rather than submit to the rules set up by the original question, pay taxes or not pay taxes, Jesus dives into a whole other level of thinking. Show me a coin, he says holding up evidence that even the holy roly, rolling Pharisees are in possession of graven images of Caesar, a Gentile ruler who claimed to be God. By carrying the coin, they admit their participation in empire, their collective debt to Caesar. But Jesus reminds them of the truest power they know, the power of God, and responds, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Profound, bold, wise. But wait, are they supposed to pay taxes or not? There are at least a dozen ways to interpret Jesus' statement, the separation of church and state, allegiance to government, anarchy, and several others. Jesus sends us into that complexity over and over. When asked if they should stone that woman caught in adultery, Jesus, again, doesn't say yes or no. He says, let the one without sin cast the first stone. Jesus plays the fool in these stories with his parables in the best sense of the fool. We all know the bumbling fool, the three stooges, for example. But the archetype of the fool is nuanced and provocative, like Jesus. The jester in ancient Egyptian courts, Aztec courts, and European courts throughout the last thousand years is often a wise fool. Entertaining the royal family is the jester's main function, but the jester is often a key advisor, the messenger of bad news, the political commentator who can get away with criticizing the establishment through humor and trickiness. 
By doing what is unexpected, with jokes and clever insight, the jester entertains and offers political strategy at the same time. Today's court jesters might be John Stewart and Rachel Maddow, Dave Chappelle and Margaret Cho, who use humor to raise social and political consciousness. Check out this video of a modern jester. I see a lot of videos on YouTube about giving to the homeless and doing great things. So today I wanted to give back to the people that are giving to the homeless. Every single person that gives me money will have their money returned and also be given $20. I know it's not a lot of money, but it's enough to make a difference in someone's day. Check it out. Spare change. Can you spare some change, sir? I need to get a job. You gotta go. You to leave? You can't do that here. Really? Really. It's the public place. It's the store. You can't panhandle out here. Could you guys spare any change, please? I, man. I gotta work myself. Wow, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, giving to me and everything. And uh, I want to give you $20. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Because I want to give to people who are giving to others. Because you're the ones that really deserve it. So that's for you. Thank you so much, man. I just came out homeless myself. Really? Yeah, I just got a place. So you were homeless? Yeah. I was actually out here trying to give people who are out there giving. So there's 25 back to you. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, brother. I you're you're that. welcome, man. Man, can I tell you something real quick? Thank you so much for giving. I'd actually like to uh, give you your dollar back plus $20. Why? Because uh, I'm actually, I'm giving to people who give. You're so giving. the people who, who are out there giving, I think they really deserve something in return. What about you? I, uh, I'm all right. Gosh. Yeah. You want to give me that $20? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you deserve it. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. You should look it up on YouTube later so you can see it without all the choppiness. Um, giving to those who give is what you can search for, and his YouTube channel is Big Dogs, with D-A-W-G-S. <laughs> give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God's. I find that statement very interesting after watching this video. May many people would call his generosity foolish, but it wakes us up to another way of being. Just like the joker in any standard deck of playing cards, the fool in the tarot deck is an expression of the archetypal energy of play, spontaneity, and creativity. The fool is said to live in the moment, at harmony with nature. The fool plays like Jesus, with riddles and parables. All tarot cards have a number. The fool's number is zero which is thought to represent the fool's trusting, innocent nature. Intuition guides the fool, not skepticism or past experience. The fool starts with a blank slate with zero. Just like the guy giving away $20 bills in the video, the fool is guided by innocence, not cynicism. The fool carries a flower in appreciation of beauty and often gazes up at the sky with joy at living in the moment while nearing the edge of a cliff. Foolish, yes, but Paul says we walk by faith and not by sight. The fool has also been called crazy or mad. I don't know if you can see it in the card on the right, which is an Afro-Brazilian tarot deck. There are various languages, El Loco included. So the fool is called crazy or mad representing instability, insanity, and inconstancy. I would say this is a redemption of craziness, of madness, and Martin Luther King tells us the same thing. Modern psychology has a word, maladjusted. Certainly, we all want to avoid the maladjusted life. In order to have real adjustment within our personalities, we all want the well-adjusted life in order to avoid neurosis, schizophrenic personalities, but I say there are certain things in our nation and in the world to which I am proud to be maladjusted. 
I say very honestly that I never intend to become adjusted to segregation and discrimination. I never intend to become adjusted to religious bigotry. I never intend to adjust myself to economic conditions that will take necessities from the many to give luxuries to the few. As King reminds us, this is the perfect time for the fool. Our world needs our foolishness. Not just any kind of foolishness, of course. Not the instability of the world, climate change, water shortages, biological and environmental disasters. But the instability of turning over tables of exploitation. The world needs our insanity. Not the insanity of fear-mongering, police brutality, and stockpiling weapons, but the insanity of turning the other cheek and giving our shirts as well. Paul writes to the church in Corinth, the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight. We are fools for Christ's sake. We have inherited a hearty tradition of holy foolishness, St. Francis is considered the first fool for Christ, at least by the Catholic Church, and also is called God's clown. Like the tarot fool, St. Francis was guided by intuition and trust, rather than cynicism. Art Gish, a Church of the Brethren rabble-rouser, said, We are not called to be effective, but to be faithful. What a foolish notion. I actually get anxious when I contemplate his statement. It seems risky to give up our attention to effectiveness. And yet the more we set our sights on effectiveness, the more we can trip on the potholes of manipulation, cutting corners, leaving people out, selling ourselves short. Art was an organic farmer and writer in Ohio and also worked with Christian peacemaker teams in the Middle East. Art stood in front of this Israeli tank in the village of Hebron and kept it from destroying a Palestinian vegetable market. Turns out he was both faithful and effective in this moment, but he had no reason to expect he would be effective. In fact, two months after this picture was taken, Rachel Corey was killed when she tried a similar move in front of a bulldozer that destroyed a Palestinian home. Playing the fool, the faithful fool, is risky. Playing the faithful fool is something we're all born to do. Do you remember the emperor's new clothes, the story by Hans Christian Andersen? The emperor has been duped into believing his new outfit is absolutely the bee's knees, and everyone around him cheers him on because they are either intimidated by his emperor's status, intimidated by the power of the crowd praising the outfit, or intimidated by the utter awkwardness of his naked parade, it takes a child to cry out the truth. As children, we were all like the tarot fool, number zero, with trust and innocence our guides, not skepticism nor past experience. As children, we were wise enough to see the naked emperor and tell the truth. We learn through life to submit to authority, to go along with the crowd, to fear taboos. But like the tarot fool, children already know how to live in the moment, in harmony with all around them, with an innocent and trusting spirit, trusting their own intuitive power. No wonder Jesus said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Malala Yousafzai was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize last week. As a child in Pakistan, she spoke up for education for girls and boys, and she wrote a blog about life in Pakistan with its official government occupying foreign forces, rebel movements, anti-rebel movements. She was being faithful to her deepest beliefs about human dignity and driven by holy, foolish innocence writing this blog and the Taliban sent a gunman onto her school bus who shot her in the head. She knew it might happen. She had said already, I think of it often and imagine the scene clearly. Even if they come to kill me, I will tell them what they are trying to do is wrong, that education is our basic right. Malala has lived without baggage, like the zero card, the tarot fool. Malala brings foolish 
faithful freshness to her activism. She said, traditions are not sent from heaven. It is we who make cultures, and we have the right to change them, and we should change them. Malala became an international icon after surviving this gunshot, and she was invited to the White House to meet with President Obama. And she's been all over the news, and now she's won the Nobel Peace Prize. So of course she's been criticized as a sellout to the West. And certainly she has helped us assuage some of our guilt. Even while Obama has her over at the White House, he's also ordering drone strikes on Pakistan, on her country. So exactly, so now I'm gonna quote what she said. It's true that when there's a drone attack, ter terrorists are killed, but civilians too, and 500 or 5,000 more people rise against it, and more terrorism occurs, and more bomb blasts occur. So for that reason, I think the best way to fight against terrorism is to do it through peaceful ways, not through war, because I believe that a war can never be ended by a war. That's what she said to Obama when he had her over to the White House. <laughs> Malala has the faithful foolishness to take on our president, to call out naked emperors when she sees them. Inspired by the wisdom of Malala, the madness of Art Gish, the folly of the guy giving away $20 bills, the rebel jesters like Margaret Cho and Dave Chappelle, may we play the faithful fool, guided by the witness of Jesus and dreaming God's dream. Let us rise and sing together. Justice and where everyone is free. 